Hello internet world and welcome to an unplanned and very unexpected live broadcast. I did some videos yesterday, in fact I think yesterday I did three videos and um, I didn't plan to do a video today because I had so so much on. Uh, to catch you up on what's actually been happening today so far, uh, well, well yesterday was just a super busy day and at the end of the day I did my unboxing and sort of first look at the Xbox One X and um, today has been setting up the Xbox One X which wasn't as smooth as I thought it was going to be. I, I didn't uh, expect it to go completely smoothly but I unboxed the Xbox One X on camera and then this morning I set up to actually connect it to the TV in the studio and also I knew I'd have to do some sort of update. So I ran the updates and then I got into this loop where I had a spinning sort of wheel on the, uh, on the screen and it just wouldn't load to the main dashboard. So I did some sort of settings changes or sort of restarted a few times and then I actually managed to get things working added in the hard drive because I bought an external hard drive for the Xbox One X and then I set that to the default install location and then the App Store or Microsoft Store or Xbox Store whatever you want to call it on the Xbox One X would then not update they said there was an update for it but it kept hanging and not installing and I still haven't solved that issue so that's still in pending but I've, in, I've actually installed a few apps now a few games and I'm going to be playing those over the next few days. I couldn't get the webcam working either. I think that's still in sort of a test uh, mode with uh, Microsoft. So hopefully I'll get the webcam working in time to do some live broadcasts. I tried using it with Mixer. It showed up there in the settings. But when I did a, a test live broadcast, it wouldn't show uh, the um, camera at all. So hopefully that will happen uh, sometime in the new year so do stick around for those I'll be putting them both on I think probably on Twitch if I can get the web camera working with it if not it'll be on Mixer and I'll try and do some sort of archive so I can pull them across to uh, YouTube as well now I know a lot of you have tuned in for this news and um, before I tell you what's happened I, I'll just set the scene I don't really care if people don't believe me because you're not going to believe me because I don't even believe this has happened myself but I'm beyond caring about that whenever I take up a new smartphone I do tests of smartphones reviews this is my daily driver the OnePlus 5T people are still sending me private messages saying this only comes out for the videos this is my daily driver I'm really enjoying using it I use it for Twitter Instagram I did a lot of Instagram stories this morning the front-facing camera on this I think performed really well for Instagram stories and I'm really enjoying it but something happened today and I didn't want to do the broadcast straight away one because I was super busy doing other things but two I had to take time to calm down and do some sort of investigation and I spent an hour on the phone to Apple. I spent time emailing people who I was sort of trying to interrogate into perhaps they could have been involved in this. There are a few companies that wanted me to cover products for the iPhone 10, so I emailed them. And all of them came back with not knowing what on earth I was even on about. And I didn't want to offend anyone, so I stopped sort of making those sort of inquiries. And it was then that I called up Apple and gave a, a serial number over to them just to try and find out what happened and it, what on earth is going on. Now, before I reveal exactly what's going on, I will also mention I will be taking plenty of questions because there will be questions in the live chat. Uh, if you want your question or comment highlighted, you can use the Super Chat. Something else that people keep on asking me to do, if you've watched my live broadcast regularly over the past month or so, uh, about a week ago, this guy up here, this uh, lion mask, actually appeared in one of my videos. It was actually a tweet challenge. I tweeted out, got enough retweets, so I had to buy the mask in. I also started wearing my Christmas hat. Now, normally, I would put that on for such occasions, but I am only going to put those on if I get a super chat. Which phone is making a noise? I think it's this one. Or is it this one? Let's put this to silent and stop all of the noise. But anyway, I'm only going to put that on uh, if I get uh, enough uh, super chats. 
So if you want the lion mask to appear, you want this to appear, then you know what you've got to do. But anyway, enough delaying what has happened. And I just, I still can't work out or even know whether it's going to be a keeper. I genuinely can't. I can't work out what has happened. But this is what turned up, this box here. And it's an Amazon box. It's got the prime labels around it, like the normal sealing tape that they're using. And it's just a standard Amazon box. So I had no suspicion when I was opening it. I'll tell you what I thought it was. I'd ordered an accessory for the Xbox One X and uh, some rechargeable batteries. I thought it was the rechargeable batteries. And when I opened this scruffy looking box, this was inside. So this is a 256 gigabyte iPhone 10 or iPhone X, whatever you want to call it. This was inside of this box. It did have a, a battery sort of warning on the back. That might be a clue actually. Do Amazon use standard labels on their boxes or does that come from the shipper? Like with a different number on because it's got like a number to call. Hmm. I wonder if I could do some more sort of a uh, searching on that number just to see where it came from. But it's no paperwork in the box, no receipt, and this was inside the iPhone 10. Now I sent my iPhone 10 off to its new owner after I did my initial review of it and they're still thoroughly enjoying it. They're really pleased with the iPhone 10. I absolutely didn't like it and I still don't. I still don't like that notch. I'm not going to go on about the notch. But this was actually unsealed. So inside was an iPhone 10. It hadn't it hadn't been set up or it had been reset, but it did already have a screen protector on. So I know it's not come from Apple Direct and I've got no idea how this has come to me. Now, as I mentioned, I've sent out a total of about, I would guess about 40 emails. By the way, here is, let me just unlock it because I've set it up to, uh, to so that I could show you it is a working iPhone 10. So I've set this up, but I've sent a total of, it must be about 40 emails to various people trying to find out what this is. And when I rang Apple, they thought I was absolutely crazy. They, they sort of said to me, well, you know, you must have bought it yourself. And I'm like, I don't know where it's come from. It's come in an Amazon box. And I gave them the serial number. They said they couldn't tell me anything that the serial number was actually registered against. And I suppose they have to do that for privacy means or, you know, privacy concerns. So even if it did have another user registered to that serial number, they couldn't tell me. And the only advice they gave me was just to keep reaching out to people to find out you know where this could have come from now it is in the run up to christmas but my family and my friends know that i didn't have any interest in the iphone 10 so i don't know what to do with it i really don't so i'm pleased i'm genuinely pleased but i'm just so concerned so so concerned as to where this has come from it is absolutely crazy it's just a uh, it's almost mental i just don't know what to what to say about it now basically Prior to this coming in, what I was doing was I was using my iPhone 7 Plus. This is my iPhone 7 Plus. I was using it just for the authentication app. I was using it just for doing tests. It appeared in my video where I did the Archon mounts, uh, sort of over here. Uh, I'll, I'll always keep an iOS device just so that I can update you guys as to what I think about the iOS updates. Any new apps that are iOS only, which are few and far between now, they normally launch on both platforms. So I was always going to keep this. I'm actually not going to keep this now. Uh, once I've got this confirmed that I can actually keep it and somebody doesn't say, oh, it's been sent to the wrong address, I'm going to probably give it around about two weeks, say two to four weeks. If nobody claims this and says, like, you know, that is my iPhone, then I will get rid of this one and keep that as my backup device. But just to reiterate, and I can't emphasise this enough, my daily driver is still going to be the OnePlus 5T. I still think this is a far superior smartphone. You can buy two of these for the price of one iPhone 10. Uh, it's been doing everything that I want it to do. Uh, the camera update that happened the day before yesterday in the evening really has improved the camera a great deal. Uh, I haven't seen any other sort of improvements with the update. It said that there were some bug fixes and, and bits and pieces in it. Uh, but those of you asking in the uh, comments section uh, how I've been getting on with the OnePlus 5T, it's been going really well. I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed. I never thought I would move away from an iOS device. 
Now, a couple of the main questions I'm getting about my switch to Android, so let's cover those off, and then we'll come back to talking about the iPhone 10 a little bit more. The two two main issues I've been having with it, uh, one is with uh, iMessage. So I have been missing iMessage. I've got installed on here WhatsApp and Viber, so I've been using those two apps for my messaging between sort of friends and family. I've only got one on Viber, all the rest are on WhatsApp. And then for the rest of the time, I'm, I'm on unlimited texts. So my plan with my um, uh, phone provider is unlimited texts. So I've been using texts all the time. And whenever I send a picture or an image, because I don't want to incur charges for that, I've been switching across to using WhatsApp. Now I know there is an iMessage client for um, uh, Android, as David Hepworth just put in the, the chat there, uh, but it relies on a, a like a partnership app that runs on the desktop or laptop. I had security concerns about that. I didn't sort of like the idea of that, and I know there are workarounds, but I worry about the messages going through another service before they arrive on the phone. So I'm quite happy using WhatsApp. It's just not quite as good as what I was hoping for. The only other issue I've got on here is with notifications. And I like the way notifications are done, but some of the security apps I use, the notifications are coming through with funny sort of sounds and as though the sound's all broken and stuttery. Uh, so maybe it needs a reset, maybe it needs to be reinstalled. Uh, but other than that, the battery life has been brilliant. The screen is gorgeous, I love the screen. Uh, there's no color shift on it and it just works really nicely. I also really like the case, very, very nice wooden case on here as well so this has been going extremely well thoroughly enjoying it so for those of you who are wondering what is my daily driver this is my daily driver and it will remain to be so in, uh, for the foreseeable future i'm still expecting the htc u11 plus in goodness knows when my order went in for it weeks weeks ago and i've had no update as to whether it's shipping or not it was meant to be shipping the first week of december but well, it hasn't obviously shipped and it's we're now at the end of the second week of December uh, and still no sign of that. I have also got the Asus Zenfone 4 in to review so I'm going to be doing a review on that as well. So that's the update on the OnePlus 5T, still going strong, still thoroughly enjoying it. And Before we talk a bit more about the iPhone 10, whether it's my iPhone 10 I still don't know, but before we talk about the iPhone 10, Let's have a look inside the chat. And I, I sound like I'm complaining about it, but I'm just so concerned. You know, what if that is someone else's iPhone 10? I, I'm just genuinely concerned about it. But anyway, let's have a look inside the chat. There's no super chats in, so the lion mask is staying up there. I will put the Christmas hat on. Let's get in the Christmas spirit. After all, that's, let's turn the lights on. Where's the little button? There we go, we're flashing. So let's put the, the Christmas hat on. We're not long till Christmas now, 11 days till Christmas. So the hat has gone on with no super chats. The, the mask is staying there. It's very claustrophobic, that mask anyway. So I'm glad no one has put, um, uh, I'm glad no one's put a super chat in really. So let's have a look back to see if we've got any questions. Uh, Lux Nix, I find it hard to believe, but you're definitely trustworthy, so I believe it. I really honestly don't know. I've got no, indication at all where it's come from and i'm very suspicious because it was unsealed and it had a screen protector on so that that's the main cause for concern is it's maybe it's a return that's gone i don't know i really don't know uh tony skit what is that phone if you're referring to this one this is the one plus 5t and i have got a very special offer link where you can get a voucher if you order a one plus 5t using my link so please do follow me on twitter if you want to get that link for yourself give me a tweet at geekanoids i uh, heard andrew bombar saying do you know that your youtube name sounds like hemorrhoids <laughs> very good how did you know i try to keep those sort of things private i really do um we've also got uh, phantom graphics saying how am i finding the oneplus 5t um, absolutely fine. As I said before, I've done, that was my little update and it's been going really well. Uh, David Hepworth says, just tuned in. Why do you have another iPhone 10? I've got no idea why I've got another iPhone 10. Uh, Chris Bryson, did it have a D-Pran skin applied? No, it didn't, but it did have a screen protector. Let me just unlock this. And it's got like one of these, um, 
it's got like a, a glass type screen protector on it with this black border on uh, and like a little metal bit at the top uh, it didn't have the case on I put the case on myself just to just so I don't scratch it in case I'm gonna have to put it back in the box and send it off somewhere but it had like a glass screen protector on uh, not very well applied so not to my standards there was all bubbles in it you can't see the bubbles because uh, I've got it turned off but the, if I give you a little close up there I don't know if you can see that on the camera but there's all like bubbles all over it that would drive me absolutely crazy apps <laughs> that would drive me mental i'm really like uh ocd about my screen protectors uh, normally when i get a new phone out of the box i put it on a piece of cloth and then i um clean the screen make sure it's completely dust free uh sometimes i even spray with a like a bottle to like get any sort of, like a water bottle to get any sort of dampness out of the air and then i'm really careful with my screen protectors that would drive me crazy. So it looks like somebody's had a screen protector on, taken it off, put it back on. So there's all little bubbles underneath. Uh, the unexpected could have been a mistake on Amazon's part. I have emailed Amazon. I have had a reply back from Amazon as well. And they're saying they've got no record of an order being sent out to me from Amazon. It didn't have Amazon stickers on. It, so this was the box, but it didn't have like an Amazon printed label on. It's got the... the let me just put this down. It's got the uh, remnants of one here, what looks like an Amazon label just here. Don't know, that could be a remnants of an Amazon label, but it's got like the remnants of one here, but it just had a normal label on the front. It was a printed label as well, sort of like a laser, uh, like a laser printer label. Um, you know, like the shipping labels you get from uh, the, the Dymo label printers, that sort of size of label printed on it. So. It's uh, really strange, very very strange. And the other, oh, the other thing that actually the other thing that was really weird is it didn't have David Cryer on it or Mr. DP Cryer. It had Dave Cryer, so it's somebody who knows me as Dave. And normally it's only you guys that know me as Dave or like close friends and family. But then family call me David anyway. Uh, N M T W six saying keep it, Dave. And David James saying enjoy it. Well, I will only keep it if it is a genuine mistake. You know, well, I say a genuine mistake. If it isn't claimed, then I will keep it. But I'm not going to do anything crazy with it for at least a month. Um, I'll, I'll keep reaching out to just try and find out. And it, it was just a regular uh, post as well. It would, didn't have any sort of um, what, what's it called signed for. It wasn't special delivery or anything. It was just a regular stamp on it, not even one of the printed stamps. It was like a, a normal coloured postage stamp. I don't even see those nowadays. Uh, but no sort of printed Royal Mail label on it or anything. Very, very weird. Very strange. So anyway, changing the topic very slightly. This is turning into an Ask Me Anything Q&A. &A. Uh, Angel Muniz asks, which is better, the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X? Well, they are both really good consoles. The big difference in the X is, of course, you've got that 4K or UHD uh, gaming and also Blu-ray as well. Not sure if the Xbox One S did that. Uh, I think it just did standard Blu-ray. Uh, but certainly 4K oh, and HDR as well. So when you've got a, a, an Xbox One X enhanced game that takes advantage of both 4K and HDR, it looks absolutely stunning. And it's very quiet. That's another thing I noticed. In comparison to my previous Xbox One, it was extremely quiet, so really very, very impressed with it so far. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Walker saying, send it to me. I will look after it for you. I'm sure you will, but I'll look after it myself uh, for the next month. Um, we've also got Dashcam Man. I thought you had an iPhone SE. Why keep the 7 Plus? I actually gave my iPhone SE away um, about three four weeks ago something like that a uh, member of the family needed an iPhone and I thought well you know I've got that one spare I still preferred the larger screen of the iPhone 7 Plus so I've no no longer got the iPhone SE uh, David James if it was Apple that sent it to you you would know yeah definitely because it would have had I, I would recognize an Apple sticker for a start and secondly it wouldn't have come in a a standard sort of Amazon box. I know what Apple packaging looks like. Uh, they've been sending out 
devices to YouTubers like the iMac Pro. I'm not even on Apple's radar anymore. I used to get review products from them, but don't get them any longer. Uh, Dashcam Man, it's a clone. Well, that's what I was worried about, but it certainly doesn't... All the indications look as though it's it's uh, a proper phone. And, and even Apple, when I was on the phone to Apple, they said that it is a, a proper serial number. So unless they manage to clone the uh, serial number, then um, I don't know. That's, it's just really weird. Uh, David Hepworth also saying the iMac Pro is launched today, uh, which it has. I don't think it's available in the UK on their store yet. I think it's about 6 p.m. that will be available. So that would be really cool to see. Very expensive, though. Uh, uh, the Unexpected, do you plan a future review or purchase of an Android Wear smartwatch? Well, I won't purchase one because I, I don't really wear smartwatches myself. I, I review them. I can see that some people really get a lot out of them. I wore an Apple Watch for a long, long time, but I was forcing myself to do that. Uh, I wear a fitness tracker. Fitbit Charge 2, and I wear a traditional wristwatch uh, when I'm out and about. Um, oh, this is really interesting. Uh, we've got um, we've got RPG Andy Gaming. My money is on a screen protector company sending it out to you. It could be, it could be, but if they've sent it out with a screen protector that badly applied then I would worry. I would worry about them contacting me and saying, hey, can you, you know, we sent you it, can you do a uh, video on how cool our screen protector is because it's full of bubbles, unless they're going to send me a, another screen protector. Um, I don't I don't really see that. Not sure. Not sure. But but a very good, very good comment, you know. It could, could well be. Uh, David James, how come they don't send you any review products anymore? They seem to be doing it with certain YouTubers recently. It's a long, long story. It's a long story. Apple, uh, I would say it's around about five to six years now, maybe the five year mark. They used to send me like software. I had a few iPods from them. Uh, iPod Nano, I think it was they sent, and a shuffle. Um, when Final Cut was just Final Cut, uh, not Final Cut Pro, and when there was the Express version as well, they sent me out that to review. Um, what else did they send me? Lots of little bits, and I also used to go and photograph their uh, Apple Store openings for them as well from inside the store. So I used to get there around about an hour, hour and a half before the store opened, and then I would go in the store with the members of staff, and then I'd be at the back of the store when they opened the doors to the members of the public. Uh, and we just had a few little fallings out over the years regarding content that I put on. I wasn't always positive about their products. I posted a photo they didn't agree on once, and um, then they they just change. They they stop sending out things, and it, it's not just me. You know that has they have tightened a lot, and it, and it's only just recently that they've started sending things out to some of the top YouTubers. Um, you know they're, they're sending out like the the iMac Pro. They're sending that out obviously to people that use that for producing 4K or 8K videos. You know so um, good on them anyway. Good for their marketing. Why not? Uh, Harry K, did Apple send it to you? No. I don't think so at all because it wouldn't have come in an Amazon box. Uh, we've also got uh, Harry K saying maybe they're trying to get you back. <laughs> they're trying to stop me from switching completely uh, to Android. So, you know, they, they don't like the fact I'm saying this is my daily driver. Maybe they are. Maybe somebody really dislikes me switching to, to Android. Uh, Mark Probert, did you have to sign for it on delivery? No, no signature at all. Postman just handed it over the doorstep. Um, Paul Bunting, have you done an IMEI check to see if it's lost, stolen? Apple did that on that sort of hour-long phone call I had with them. They did all the checks with that, and it's uh, a legit phone as far as they can they can tell. Uh, log home, you can send it to me if you don't want it. Uh, David James, that's a shame. You shouldn't have to always like everything they do. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. We don't all have to agree with Apple 100% of the time. I wholeheartedly agree. And this is the, the trap that some reviewers fall into, is that they only say positive things about every single product. Now, I've been accused of doing the same. In some of my videos previously, somebody said to me, you know, you didn't say any negatives, and that's because there genuinely wasn't any negatives. But certainly when I'm doing the smartphone reviews, I hope you're appreciating that I'm giving you both the positives and the negatives about devices. 
um, and that's what I've always intended to do so that you can make an informed buying decision and that's what I intend to do uh, going forwards as well. Uh, log home enjoying the hat, thank you very much, battery's still going strong, now on its third Christmas I think the batteries, So and they're not rechargeable, smartphone manufacturers listen up, copy the technology in the hat. Uh, the unexpected, will you in future plan to review the best sub £300 smartphones of 2017? That is probably unlikely because a lot of the smartphones that I get come in, for example the Razer phone that I had in recently, I know that's over £300, but a lot of the phones that I get in uh, are loaners, so they're review products. So after the two to three weeks I have them in the studio, they then go back to the manufacturer or the supplier or the retailer. Uh, so they don't remain with me so then it's really hard for me to do a recap video um, and also when I do these comparison videos although some of you including yourself would probably appreciate it there are a lot of people that don't like these comparison videos because you end up saying this device is better than this device and then they own the device that you've said is worse and, and you get a lot of lot of people very passionate about what they buy and rightly so if you spend a lot of money imagine if you spend all that money and this is why I got a lot of um, uh, complaints about my initial iPhone video uh, people would have spent a thousand pound plus on an iPhone and then there's me saying oh the notch is terrible so they didn't really like my opinion on it it's, it's really it's a really hard balance when you're doing this sort of video uh, goal 97 this bribe is going to sway your choice no, I don't think so. Uh, Andrew Walker, does the Fitbit Charge 2 have an always-on display option for the time, Dave? No, it doesn't. It's always this raise to show the display. So you do a raise, and then it shows the display, and then it goes off. So no, there isn't an always-on uh, display. Uh, Harry K saying, what size is it? I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you let me know what you want to know what size something is oh what size as in capacity sorry I've just seen log home saying is it a 256 gigabyte yeah it is a 256 gigabyte model as well so top end model so really really surprised and brightx09 saying hi Dave Merry Christmas right back at you have a fantastic Christmas and an amazing new year as well uh, dash cam man sell it dave and buy two plus one five two one plus five t's that's a really difficult sentence that is very true sell this and buy two more of these but then i'd have three i don't need three i'm quite happy with just one but very very true very true indeed uh peter uh Sasmosi says hey dave do you have issues with mac os high sierra i'm running mac os high sierra here the only issue i had was that it wouldn't run my previous version, so the older version of Wirecast Play, which is what I used to use for broadcasting on YouTube. Now I've upgraded to Wirecast Pro uh, version 8, I think it is, or 8.1. Uh, that's all running fine. All of the other um, all of the other software I've tried on Mac OS High Sierra has been working absolutely fine. Uh, RPG Andy Gaming, it could always be a rich fan of yours. It could well be. It did have Dave on it. This is one of the, the indicators. Not a lot of people call me Dave. So, again, I'll reach out to you guys. If any of you can spread any light on where this came from, then uh, please do get in touch. You know, tweet me at Geekanoids. When this video goes live on the channel, uh, or, or sorry, when it goes into the archive on the channel after the live broadcast, then please do leave me some comments. Let me know what you think I should do. I'm always open to your suggestions. Uh, the Iron Masters, where are you from? Well, I was born just outside of London in the UK, uh, around about 20 years ago. Uh, we've also got Dashcam Man saying, check that the phone isn't a malware listening device. First thing I did when I turned it on was it came on as a new device, uh, but then when it was all set up, I did a full reset again. Um, so hopefully it should be all right. I really don't know how to check that though. Oh, now that you've said that, that is a, a concern. That is a, a real concern. Very, very concerned about that. Uh, yeah, you've got me thinking now. What if it's got malware on it? I've already put quite a lot of passwords on there as well now. Okay, more research to do. More research to do for me this evening. 
Uh, K7 LKO says, thought you had just sold one of them, Dave. Yes, I had. I had sold one. This one, if you tuned in late, just turned up in the post. Uh, and Alan McQuell saying, uh, how's the OnePlus 5T again? I've already done my recap of the OnePlus 5T. Uh, Harry K, what do you think of the price of the new iMac Pro? I think it's very expensive. It does perform very well. It's not very upgradable, so it's not modular in any way. But I heard a, another journalist talking about it on one of the podcasts I listened to, and he was saying it might not be upgradable, but it's pretty much packed to the gills with, with the really high-end specs anyway. So you probably wouldn't need to upgrade it, which is a very true comment. Uh, so for the price, you know, it does perform extremely well. Is it for me? Probably not. I'm quite happy with my iMac and my Mac Pro. I think they perform very well. If I was going to do 8K video, then, yep, I might need a need for it, or I might have a need for it. If I was going to earn that money back uh, from doing commercial work, then it might be justified. I talked about this in a previous broadcast as well. Uh, somebody was saying about investing in the uh, streaming software. Same applies to the iMac as the software, as a camera, as a laptop, as anything. Anything you buy for a business, you need to work out if that particular product you're buying is going to recoup its costs when you do work with it. Very, very important. Uh, I normally try and recoup my costs of a new piece of equipment in like three videos. Uh, not three YouTube videos, three client videos or three pieces of work I do for a company. Um, or a length of time. You know, you might buy a device and say, right, I need to recoup the cost of this particular device I bought for my business in the next three months. So we've also got Purav in the chat. Hello, Purav. You've managed to make it into a live broadcast. Thank you very much. Purav is a long time viewer and also a content creator. Do check out his channel. Uh, to catch you up, Purav, I'm trying to solve the mystery of where this came from. And just to recap, it turned up in an Amazon box. No signature required. The remnants of an Amazon label on here, or what looks like an Amazon label, and then just like a laser printed label on here with just Dave Cryer and my address. No indication of where it came from. That is the mystery for today's video. Uh, and it is concerning because somebody just said to me uh, in the chat, uh, what if this has got sort of spyware or malware on it? And that has concerned me because I've put some of my passwords in when I was setting it up as a, as a new device. So I'm really concerned now that somebody said that in the chat. I'm quite worried. <laughs> so um, Andrew Walker says, what's the device behind you, Dave, with the blue light? If you're referring to this down in the corner here, I've got a bank of uh, different RAID hard drives. These are what I edit video direct to. I've got two here on this side that are connected to the iMac and then the other two on that side are connected to the Mac Pro. And I edit direct to one of them and then at the end of each day one drive mirrors to the other drive and there's two hard drives in each. They're set up in a RAID 0 configuration. Uh, RPG Andy Gaming. Is the phone ticking? No, it's not ticking. <laughs> Dashcam Man, how did they get your address? Shrug emoji. Uh, Daniel Carter. Hi, Dave. Hey to you, Daniel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really nice to see you here. Uh, we've also got uh, Michael uh, Nugent saying President Trump sent you that. <laughs> oh, dear. That is crazy. Uh, Harry K, maybe it's from another Geekanoids fan who just wanted to send you a gift for Christmas. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I really don't know. Uh, do a drop test with it from Mr. Singh. Now, I'm not going to drop it. I, I, you know, even with devices that could end up being free, uh, I, I always sort of treat things that have got value, you know, very carefully. I always look after my devices. I put them all in cases. You know, this is a this. Um, uh, iPhone 7 Plus is over a year old now. It's been in a case from day one and had a screen protector on from day one. So I always look look after things. Uh, dating for adults, how many weeks in a year? 52. Last time I checked. Uh, could be Santa, says Michael. It could well be. Uh, Bright C09, factory reset the phone, Dave, and order more where if any will be gone. Well, I did do that. But what if it is? It can't be a clone. I did already did a reset, so that's um, 
you know, that's it's good to know that that should have sorted it. I might ring up Apple again after doing this broadcast and just ask their opinion as well. So many of you in the broadcast and in the chat. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, Michael Nugent, I think it's your wife. She wanted to surprise you. I think it's a bit... Oh, I don't know. Now that you've said that as well, that's... um. Nah, it can't be. It can't be because I, I don't think she'd have bought... Because it's like a second-hand one. Would somebody have bought me a second-hand one? I really don't know. I really don't know. Malware might be part of the reset. Oh, you're really worrying me now. Dashcam man. You're really... Mur and Michael says it could be Milo. <laughs> and also Jazz Shampoo saying it's got Santa written all over it. Have I spoiled someone's surprise? Now you've got me worried about that. Have I sort of unboxed something that wasn't meant to be unboxed? <laughs> oh, no. The only people I didn't text yet uh, was my kids because they're at uni. I didn't want to sort of text them while they are in class. Um, and they wouldn't have done it, but maybe they might have said something like that as well. <laughs> oh, no. Have I spoiled someone's surprise? Just thinking, no, 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 you got me worried, but I don't think I have. Uh, poor Av D, will this phone replace the iPhone 10 you had before? Right, poor Av, to catch you up, the iPhone 10 I had before, I actually purchased that in to do a review of it because I had so many of you asking for me to give my opinion on the iPhone 10. So I did my initial unboxing and a few other videos based on the iPhone 10. Uh, I bought that in the knowledge that I already had a buyer for it and it's still with its new owner and they're very happy with it. So um, I wouldn't have just purchased one in because I'd have never recouped my money and I don't believe in buying products in and then returning them. That's really against my sort of uh, morals. I don't like doing that. So when I did that initial iPhone 10 video, it already had a new owner. That's why I did the videos relatively quickly uh, purely because I didn't want to keep them waiting. Uh, will it replace it? Well, as I mentioned at the, the beginning of this broadcast, I'm not going to do anything with this uh, like properly for probably about a month. I'm going to sort of wait a month until or until the mystery is solved sooner. So if I solve the mystery sooner, then I'll obviously update all of you in a video. Uh, but until then, uh, I'm not even going to take it out. I'm not going to take it out of the house. I'm not going to use it uh, per se. I might show it in a couple of videos. Uh, but I'm not going to really use it because I, I don't feel that it's mine yet. Although although it had my name and address on it, I still think there's something not quite right with it. Um, Neon K. Francis, watching live from Ghana. Awesome. Thank you very much from, for tuning in. That is a really awesome comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, not sure of the time difference, so you're in obviously a different time zone, but I really do appreciate you tuning in, Neon. That is really cool of you. Uh, we've also got uh, Alan Miquel saying, is the phone legit though? Are you sure it's not one of those high quality fake ones? Well, when I gave the serial number to Apple, uh, they didn't tell me what was logged against that serial number, but the guy on the other end of the phone did say it was a genuine serial number. So unless they've cloned a serial number as well, I don't know if it is a fake one. Uh, RPG Andy Gaming, did the person who bought your iPhone send it back to you? Uh, no, they wouldn't have posted it to me if they were bringing it back. Say they said, Dave, it's not working anymore. They would have actually brought it back to me in person. Uh, Purav, there seems to be a few reviewers that buy phones, then return them just for videos. I don't like that philosophy either. You need to spend a good amount of time with the phone to properly showcase it. I wholeheartedly agree. Very much agree, Purav. Great, great comment. I really do agree with that. Uh, Michael Nugent says it's a conspiracy it could be from you you don't want people to know you use an iPhone <laughs> I don't mind people knowing what phone that I use I really don't I even considered I'm picking up OnePlus 5T again there I don't know why but I even considered uh, switching to a Nokia 3310 the 3G version um, just for like a week or two just to sort of detoxify from uh, being online all the time. I'm still considering doing it. I really am. Uh, hopefully Santa will put one in my stocking or under the tree because I would like to try that. Sort of one of these dumb phone tests where I go off grid, you know, for um, for at least a week 
I uh, don't know if I've managed two weeks, but at least a week. And in fact, a good example of that, I know a lot of people you don't people don't like this program. I know a lot of you don't like it. When I talked about this in one of my live streams on the Geek Vlogs channel, I like I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. I watched every single episode. I watched the Extra Camp episodes as well. And I really like it. I know certain things are set up on it. And I know it's not all what we see is all what's happening. But I just genuinely like it. It's one of the reality TV shows that I, that I like uh, because it seems quite genuine. And I love Ant and Dex banter as well. Um, but one of the things I like there was people saying that they really missed their phones initially. Some of them saying they didn't miss them. And some of them said they appreciated not having their phones disturbing them all the time. So it's a really cool thing to try. And I would really like to try it for a week. Goodness knows how I'll get on. I mean, I still have to have social media for my business because I'd still have to, you know, tweet out my videos. But I would rely on doing it on a computer. So I think if I was doing this sort of dumb phone challenge and using the Nokia uh, 3310, then um, I would probably say, right, I'm not going to use any other phone or any tablet device or even a laptop. I'd probably sort of um, make myself not use the laptop and I would just use the desktop don't know about the laptop let me know what you think do you think i should completely nothing at all apart from the desktop because i still need to get work done let me know what you think in the chat should i go for the dumb phone challenge i, I want to know if, if enough of you say go for it let's let's test this put a number one in the chat just a number one if you think i should go for the dumb phone challenge and switch to a nokia 3310 i will try it if enough of you put number one in the chat uh, poor FD housings otherwise uh, they are going really well um, very well indeed and poor I've met uh, my daughter at the Vodafone event uh, it was a good event really good event and um, uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, testing the Moto Z2 play was it or Z2 uh, really good event looked looked great fun uh, David James do you still use your MacBook Pro Dave yes I do do you know if they can edit 4K footage? Yes, they can. Very, very easily indeed. Uh, and it is the touch bar version. 13 inch. Lots of ones in the chat. How many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Lots and lots of ones. We will do it. We will get a Nokia 3310 in. Let me know what colour I should get. And I'll get a Nokia 3310 in. And then I will do a week with it. Uh, and without using desktop uh, not desktop, laptop, computer, mobile phones, tablets, all put away in a drawer, and I'll use the Nokia 3310. And RPG Andy Gaming just ruined it, and Michael with pink. I'm not gonna. I can't walk walk around with a pink with a pink one. <laughs> ah, you got me. You got me. Techzilla yellow. I could probably go with the yellow one, but not pink. I couldn't go for a pink one. I really couldn't. I really, really couldn't. How much are they anyway? About £30, something like that. It's going to be fun. I will do it because enough of you have asked asked for it. Uh, poor I've said the closest he's come to a dumb phone challenge is not to use any social media app, including WhatsApp, for a week, which was hard for me. I would find it impossible. If I still had a smartphone in my hand, I would still use it. I wouldn't have that uh, sort of control. I really wouldn't. Uh, Harry K, do you have a glass screensaver on the OnePlus 5T? No, I don't. I'm using the uh, plastic film type screen protector that was pre-applied in the box. I have got a glass one to put on it, but I haven't put it on there yet. So anyway, that is pretty much it. I'm going to wind things down with this live broadcast uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm really hungry. Uh, two, I'm really thirsty. And uh, three, I'm expecting a courier delivery. Uh, very very soon so I've got to uh, be available for that and I don't want to end the live broadcast abruptly but I want to say a big big thank you to all of you for tuning in um, if you can help me I'll just reiterate if you can help me solve the mystery so if indeed and, and don't claim that you did it if you didn't uh, but this is the box again um, if you genuinely and I mean genuinely know where this might have come from um, I couldn't show you the label because I had all my personal details on it, but it was just like a laser printed label on the front. Uh, if you have got any idea on where I can track it, how I can track it, how I can find out 
where this came from, then please do tweet me at Geekanoids. And when this video goes actually onto the main Geekanoids channel after I end the live broadcast, please do leave me some comments as well. Come back to the video and uh, watch it again if you want to, but at least leave me a comment and give me some indication as to uh, how I can solve what's happened. I am genuinely, genuinely surprised I, and worried at the same time because of some of you guys, what you've put in the chat about malware, that has um, concerned me a great deal. Or have I ruined someone's Christmas surprise? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And again, see, my son's name's David, uh, but we call him David, you know, so uh, it, it would never be his. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to end the broadcast here. As I say, I have got a career delivery expected uh, very, very soon. So I'm going to say thank you again for tuning in. Have a fantastic rest of the week, wherever you are. Please do click that like button on the video once it goes onto the main Geek and Noise channel. And if you're not a subscriber or you know someone that's not a subscriber, please do get them to subscribe to the Geek and Noise channel. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.